In these videos, I'd like to go over how we can solve algebraic word problems, specifically those that have one unknown. Now, we're going to focus just on one unknown in this video. And I know students tend to struggle with word problems. So we're going to try to take a very foundational approach and ask ourselves some questions to lead us through the solving of these problems. So first of all, we are going to be using variables. And variables, as we usually see in algebra, I know the typical is just x. Sometimes we use y. We can really use any variable, any letter, to represent an unknown quantity. And that's really what these variables are going to represent in our equations. We will be using variables for unknown quantities. They are going to be representing most of the times, depending on the problem, unknown quantities, but also things we are looking for. Sometimes a variable is just a placeholder for something, but here these are specifically things we are looking for. There are unknown quantities that we are looking for. So let's look at this first example and kind of ask ourselves some questions. So first, we see a receipt from a previous purchase. We can only see the final price. If the sales tax rate in Pennsylvania is 6%, and we know the final price, what was the cost of your purchase without tax? Now, I'm sure many of you, just given your familiarity with these types of questions in the real world, not in an algebraic sense, but just solving these types of problems, you might know how to do this without algebra. And that's fine. But we want to start with a problem that you might be familiar with to see the, how these questions can help us kind of move through these word problems so that they can help us in other contexts. So what I mean by that, when we read this problem, what is it specifically that is asked of us? What are we looking for? At the end of the problem, what is the quantity that we want to find? If I look here, I see I'm given the final price. I'm given this number here, the sales tax rate is 6%. But really what I'm looking for, it says, what was the cost of your purchase without tax? So what am I looking for is the original price without tax. That's what I'm looking to find. It just so happens that in many of these problems, specifically this problem, that's my unknown quantity. I don't know what that is. So that's what I'm going to let a variable, I need to bring a variable into this. I'm going to let the variable represent the original price without tax. So let's let any variable, let's use P, equal the original price without tax. And that's going to be a, a good starting spot. Now, it's not always going to be the case, but in this problem... That's a quantity that I'm looking for. I think I can use that in some sort of equation. So let's let the variable equal that unknown quantity. Now let's describe this. We want to write an equation, but we want to describe this in words. A lot of the time, students just try to jump right to the equation. Try to write down what you know about this situation. Now from my just familiarity with these types of situations in the real world, I know if I have an original price of the item, and I add the tax to that, that's what's going to give me my final price. Nothing too mathematical about that except the, the symbols here for addition and our equal sign to represent the equivalence between these values. The original pr price plus the tax. Now what else might I, how could I find the tax? I might just go right down here and say this is 6%. What I know about the tax is 6% of the original price. So I'm just kind of writing down what I know. So if I have the original price and six, add 6% 6 of that original price, then I'll have my final price. Now let's go and see if we can actually take this statement here and represent it as an equation with numerical values, and if we don't know the numerical value, we'll represent that with a variable. So I'm going to kind of go down here and one for one write down exactly what it is I know. The original price, I don't know what that is. So up above, I called that P. 
So this is going to represent P. I don't know that unknown quantity. That's an unknown quantity, so I'm just going to leave it here as P. Plus 6% of the original price. Now, 6%, I know I'm not going to write that as just 6. 6% 6 is a fraction, right? That's a fraction of 6 out of 100, which we can also write as 0 0.06. 6% of the original price. So 6% of, we typically associate with multiplication, of the original price, well, that was our value of P. That's our unknown quantity. Equal to the final price, and if I look up above, I see the final price is 2703. I now have an equation where I have P plus 0 0.06P equal to 2703. This is a one variable equation that I can solve using my properties of equality. Combining like terms here, this is 1p, 1 plus 0 0.06. This is a total of 1.06. That's just adding like quantities, p, equal to 2703. And now if I can divide by this value of 1.06, I can find my value of p. So if I take 2703 and I divide that by 1.06, I'm going to get the value of P in this situation is 25.5, which I know this is a, a figure in dollars. This is $25.50. Now, like I said, you might know how to solve this problem just by jumping into it and dividing by 1.06 depending on your familiarity with the sales tax here, you might be very familiar with how to do this. But if you aren't, start by writing down what it is you don't know. What am I looking for? Many times what you're looking for is what you're going to introduce your variable as, which is what we saw here. I didn't know the original price. I'm going to let P equal the original price. Then I first, if I wasn't sure what equation to write, I first wrote down what I knew in terms of the situation in words. And then I tried to incorporate that variable, that unknown quantity, and any other important piece of information in the problem as an equation. Then I used my properties of equality to solve. Here's another example I'd like to go over. But if you want to go ahead and pause the video and give this one a shot, feel free. So in this problem, we're told a patient was given a bolus containing 10 milliliters of medication before being hooked up to an IV that was administering 22 milliliters every hour. We're told that the patient received a total of 175 milliliters. How many hours was the IV running? Just like the last problem, you might be able to do this without writing an equation, without stating a variable, and that's great. But we want to practice setting this up so, again, when we get to more complicated problems, we have practice some ways of thinking that we can approach the problem. So first of all, think about what you are looking for. What are you specifically asked to find? When I read over this, <clears throat> I usually go and I read through it, but then I look for the question. And the question specifically is how many hours was the IV running? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the number of hours... the IV was running. That's what I'm specifically looking for. It's not just hours. It's not just IV. It's specifically the quantity, the number of hours that the IV was running. So what am I going to state my variable as? Well, usually in these examples, we're stating our variable. We're introducing a variable as that unknown quantity, and it's the same case here. The unknown quantity is this number of hours. So let's let n equal the number of hours, and I'm being very specific, the number of hours the IV was running. Okay. So now that I've done that, let's go back up here. We want to kind of introduce everything that we're given in this example, and I want to write this in words. So if I can kind of understand what's going on here, the patient was giving a bolus, and for those who might forget what that is, this is just an injection. This is a single injection. 
that contained 10 milliliters. And then they were hooked up to an IV that was running at, so an IV then that was being administered, this is 22, 22 milliliters per hour. And then I'm also told that when this was all done, the patient had 175 milliliters. So just thinking about this situation, the patient was given a bolus that had some amount of milliliters. So the bolus in milliliters. I'm just going to put that in parentheses. Then this patient's also getting milliliters from the IV. So the IV is also a certain number of milliliters that she received. And that's going to add up to the total number of milliliters. So let's think about that. The bolus, that's not a problem. This is just the injection. This is just the 10 milliliters. She was given 10 milliliters in this case. But what about the, actually, before we do that, the total, we also know the total was 175. But what I need to do here is to kind of figure out how many total milliliters would the patient be receiving if I know it's running at 22 milliliters per hour. So in this case, I know the patient was getting 22 milliliters every hour, but I don't know how many hours that was running. So this is where 22 times N comes in. Again, I got that. 22 for every hour, 22 milliliters per hour, 22, I don't know how many hours, so 22 times N. That was our unknown quantity. And now we have, in this case, a one variable equation that we can solve. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. This is using the properties of equality. 22N is going to be equal to 165. And now when I divide by 22, let's see what we get. So 165, I'm going to put this in our calculator. If you know that without a calculator, that's great. But 165 divided by 22, you get 7.5. What does this actually mean? What was n? We have to go back and summarize what we actually found. Well, if I go up top again, n was the number of hours that the IV was running. So this was running for 7.5 hours, or 7 hours and 30 minutes. Again, I didn't just jump into solving this problem. I was thinking about what I don't know and spe being very specific about what I don't know. I didn't know the number of hours. So that's what I'm going to let my variable equal. And then I try to incorporate what I'm given in this problem first into words, just trying to represent this situation the best I can with words, and then introduce the specific values that I'm told. 10 milliliters was the bolus. 175 was the total, 22 milliliters for every hour. Every hour, that's how many I was looking for. What are those number of hours? Once I had that equation, I can solve. Now, not every single problem is going to be able to be solved using these types of questions and this type of technique, but it gives you an idea of what you should be asking yourself as you are completing these problems.